talking about you. Yeah, we're just talking very politely about very you. Very politely. Just and respect. We might have each had, had this intercourse with your cardboard. <laughs> All of us. <laughs> Is that why it was so sticky? <laughs> Okay, we're good. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Hey, we're I, I just have to say, like, your cardboard cutout's pretty good kiss. Thank you. No, it's, it's awesome. Um, yeah, it kind of it actually stays stiff for a really long time. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, <laughs> see, that's she Collins said to Hebrew I was trying to channel. He said he stays stay stiff for a long time. Yes. Yeah, but he didn't say hard, which proves he's just much more genteel than I am. Okay. Touche. She broke real quick. We, so we uh, tried to reenact the uh, Eiffel Tower. With, with, we had never a good idea. Yeah, cardboard cutout. Okay. And it was more like the uh, okay. <laughs> more like the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> like a really long. Where was the where was the cardboard? Uh, like your feet were my crotch, and your head was at Brianna's crotch, but it was like a mile away. So it was the most uncomfortable fake sex I've ever had. And I've had a lot. <laughs> a lot of uncomfortable fake sex? Yeah. <laughs> Hardcore <Heartburn. laughs> kids. But there's nobody queuing up. Oh, there's a list? Hold on, I'm getting a call. Hey there, can I call you back? Hello? Yeah, bad reception anyway. You ran out of minutes. <laughs> well played. Did I get my friend out of Vancouver yesterday? No, not yesterday. It got stuck, but it's okay. I'm not a very good travel agent, I found out yesterday. You know that, actually, firsthand, having traveled to Haiti and Nicaragua with me, and Russia. Yeah. You're welcome. You didn't get, you're still alive. What's that? <laughs> Just sue up. Just sue up. Just sue up. All right. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? It's been going pretty well. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Um, What's new? What? What's new? Yeah. Um, uh, you know what? I'm in Canada. That's new. Yeah. Welcome! How, you did, did you do uh, Gishwas this year? Yes. How did it treat you? You know what? Not my favorite issues about being honest. Okay, well, I didn't. Hold on. I did not ask you to be honest. You asked how it treated me. What's that? You asked how it treated me, and I, was, I just felt like my, my emotions were important there. Gishwis treated you? Yeah, that's what you just asked. How did it treat you? Okay, well, I didn't mean for you to say anything negative. <laughs> I still loved it. I'm going to do the like, social graces here. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Is it my turn now? <laughs> That's not the question. Oh. Did your name get called from the list or whatever? I think that you might be in the wrong place right now. 
Where else should I be? Um, in the, sitting in the back. <laughs> I think you'd have to escort me. Okay. All right. Touche. You won this round. <clears throat> so, Gishwiz sucked this year for you. No, it didn't suck. I just, I just, I like the items on other lists better. Oh, you didn't like the items? I, I just, I like open-ended items, and there weren't as many. Like, uh -huh. I like... I'm not asking you for your input right now, so... Can I take a poll from the audience? No, I think that no, 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 we are not doing polls. This is not a democracy. No! Stand down. What's your question? Uh, okay, I was just gonna ask what the most inappropriate thing you did in college was. <laughs> recently going back through, I, I was a um, prolific journaler during college, and I, I have recently been going back and looking at my journal entries from college, and this is something that I don't think any person should do, um, because it is like peeking into the mind of a crazy person. I was <laughs> nuts. I cannot believe this. Uh, like, I literally, I was on the... Uh, okay! I knew that coming up here today was a mistake. In chorus, the entire audience said, Was? <laughs> this is not your turn to talk. Stop it! So I... Shh! <laughs> it's like the Arab Spring in Vancouver. It's happening right now. Um... <laughs> yes? Protesters uh, took over the Western Bay Shore in Vancouver. They blockaded the doors and burned cardboard cutouts. <laughs> so, I, in, my, in my journal entries, I would say things like, "All right, that's I, I made all these proclamations. Like, I from now on, I am going to, you know, run 15 miles a day and sleep no more than three and a half hours a night." <laughs> Hey! <laughs> this is a really heckly group. Uh, and I blame you, Matt. So, um, yeah, and really, really unrealistic expectations I had for myself at every turn in my journal. Um, it was full of exuberance or really, really sort of self-pitying depression. Um, and it was at one end of the spectrum or another. Um, and, uh, and I was always handing in my papers just a few minutes. I was always journaling, because this was back in the days of dot matrix printers. You probably have never heard of them. But I was always journaling on my laptop while waiting for my papers to print out, being like, oh, why have I done this again? I procrastinated, and now I'm like, it's due right now, and it's still printing. That happened over and over again in my journal. Um, but inappropriate things, well, ah, <clears throat> uh, hmm. Hmm. I, I duct taped some people. <laughs> I, um, there, there was an elaborate network at the University of Chicago of quiet of, um, of steam tunnels that went under the entire university campus. And so I went to a flea market and bought bolt cutters and opened up the locks into the steam tunnels so that I could navigate from any building to any other building in the middle of the night and raid pantries. Um, I, 
I'm not a lawyer, but I think statute of limitations wise, I'm clear on that one. Um, I don't think they could sue me for that, could they? I don't know. Again, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know the ins and outs of this. Um, yeah, thank you. There is. See, that's the kind of heckling legal advice that I can get behind. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a really good question. Um, I, I did a lot of things. I, I did a lot of things that good people don't do. Um, I don't know how inappropriate most of my behavior was, um, but I, I did one thing that I I think is considered immoral. I. I was, um, I went to the department chair and I said, you know, they had all these requirements for the major. Like, like in my school you had to do two full years of coursework and then for your major you had to do additional coursework. And that's like a real hassle. So, <laughs> I went, it was like the, it was junior year and I was, it was at the point where I had to sort of like shuffle things around and look like what, what major am I closest to fulfilling right now? And, <laughs> I, and I went into the the, guy, the social theory guy's office, and I was like, "Listen, here's the deal. You got a lot of these requirements here for the major. They don't look that interesting to me. So I was wondering if you could sign off on me, like still getting the major, but not taking all the classes." <laughs> and the department chair was like, "No, are you nuts? That's the whole point of a major. No." And so. The next semester was the uh, fall semester of senior year, and now is really time to know what you're doing. And I brought in a bunch of paperwork to his office, the chair, and I said, here's the paperwork you said you would sign at the end of last semester about me not taking those classes. And he was like, oh, okay. It's a good trick. Uh, it just, <laughs> you just give a few months in between. People are like, I do remember your face. All right. Anyway, what have you done inappropriate in college? Well, um... I probably should not have asked that question, <laughs> but I did. This isn't my panel. Uh, it is now. Okay. <laughs> I mean, probably Gish's related stuff. There's this fountain at my school. I go to the University of Washington, and it's this big, huge thing, and you're not supposed to go in it. But I, um, when I did the panhandling one in it, mm -hmm. and um, we use paper, I, I, I like try to do a gold digging thing instead of panhandling because I'm creative. And, oh. <laughs> and, um, and we use paper money, and uh, it got, it ducks live in there, and so we might have killed some ducks. Um, no, it, it, it's not ducks, so I, they're alive. So that's just animal cruelty more than anything. <laughs> Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I just thought of another thing that I didn't call on the topic. Um, I was not yet an actor at this point, um, but I was uh, an attention and media whore already. And, um, and so the coldest day on record was coming, and it was going to be like negative 20 something plus a wind chill factor, making it feel like negative 60. And um, me and my four roommates. Um, called the local TV, Chicago TV stations, and said, we are going to run around campus naked in the coldest day if you want to come film it. <laughs> and so we did. We street campus uh, just so that we could get on the news. Is that online? Is that online? Did they film it? It's online? Is it online? It is? stuff that, that this fandom has found, these rel <laughs> relics from my past that I cannot believe exist on anywhere, including VHS tapes of tax prep training videos. How is that possible? No, no, people are like, yeah, I was like thumbing through like the, the, the giveaways at the library and found this thing. Who is looking through VHS training tapes? Who has that kind of time on their hands? Taylor, apparently. 
Taylor does, actually, yes. Hi. Hi. Um, do you mind a real serious question? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> okay. What is it? Um, recently, on Good Authority, I heard that you grow heirloom tomatoes. Wait a minute, is there like double entendre to that? <laughs> Why is the audience screaming and what don't I understand? Hey, Mom. Uh, no, no, no. We have... Okay. okay. I have a good authority that you grow heirloom tomatoes and that when you have a sore throat or a particular you either like shove them down your throat or just suck them. I feel like we're going to need to beef up security of these things. <laughs> um, what... What is happening right now? It was through a third party. It was through your cardboard cutout. Oh, I see. He was talking a lot. He <laughs> was? Your cardboard cutout was so vocal, it was unbelievable. So he likes rubbing things. No, I'm not. I'm not. You know what? I don't negotiate with terrorists. Yes, hi. Sorry, I'm getting a little too far. At a once, I heard you read the storybook Go the Fuck to Sleep. It was spectacular. It's one of my favorite books. My question is. What is actually the favorite book that you read to West and Mason, or what is their favorite book for you, and do you agree on it? We definitely do not agree. <laughs> we have not come to terms on that. I keep on trying to read things like A Wrinkle in Time, or things like that, which are way, way, way too scary. Too soon. And uh, too confusing. Um, they, they like to read um, comic books, Yes, actually, there is something wrong with it. Because they don't know, like, the little bubbles that come out of the mouths of the characters to indicate who's talking, they don't know who's talking. You actually have to be able to read yourself in order to enjoy a comic book. It's not a good thing to have somebody else read to you. Or you do the voices. Yes, you have to do the voices, but you have to do them perfectly or else they're confused. <laughs> and if there's a lot of, if it's an Avengers comic book, there's a shitload of characters. <laughs> and you have to do them all very compellingly in order, for, and you have to remember which one is which. So it's a lot of work. And you, know, you, can't, you can't really phone it in the way I like to. Um, I'm, I, yeah. I tell bedtime stories that are from, like true stories from my childhood a lot to the kids, but I've completely run out of them. And unfortunately, my son doesn't forget anything, so I can't recycle any of my material. And so I feel like they, they say, oh, tell a story about when you were a kid. And I sit there for like five minutes. Like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm trying to think. Trying to think. Did I tell you the one about the, the little bunny rabbits? Yes, Dad, and like five times. <laughs> okay, so um, addendum. Yes. Have you ever made up a story and made it true for them? Made up a story? Made up a story and told them that it was true. Well, I make up stories. I think the, the stories that I make up are often stories about m me and my wife when we were kids, hanging out with them while they were kids. And I think that they've been able to piece together that that's a work of fiction. <laughs> um, yeah. That's a, a good question, yeah. Um, bedtime is like a, it, it's an, do you have children? I have two sons. Um, how old are they? 20 and 21. So when you're, when you're putting them to sleep, um, <laughs> it gets how, how, long, how long does the bedtime ritual typically take you? Roughly 30, 45 minutes, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I, I actually have grown to really like the bedtime ritual. Well, I used to, I used to like, the end like, like count okay. the minutes and be like, when is this going to be over? But now I, I slowly 
lull myself to sleep in their tiny children's bed pretty much every night. It's nice. And, and do you figure that's probably because you don't get to spend as much time doing it? What do you mean? Well, because you, you travel a lot, you not you don't get to do the bedtime. Are you saying I'm an absent father? <laughs> <laughs> Good one, sir. <laughs> He's like, go away, lady. Um, <laughs> Not at all. I just, I know you travel a lot for your work, so I mean, imagine that, like, those moments become more precious. As... I think that that is true. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That makes sense. Um, yeah. They're, they're... As my boys got older, it became more and more important to me to spend those moments because I knew that they were going to be more and more fleeting. Yep. So you grab onto them. Um. Speaking of fleeting, um, it, it, uh, I, was, I, I was putting um, them to sleep, and um, I said, I, I love you guys, I love you, um, and I, I want you to never, ever grow up. I want you to stay my little, little kids forever and ever. And they said, no, 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 we are going to grow up. And I said, no, 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 I'm going to stay my little, little, little babies forever. And no, no, we are going to grow up. No, no, I want to, don't you see my little babies forever? And then Mason said, no, 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 I, I am going to grow up, and then I'm going to die. <laughs> sorry, one of your friends yes. was cheating me, so I had to, sorry. Um, so, you pull off amazing products. Big ones that I could never dream of like figuring out. And I'm planning on walking across the US next year. What? what, what, what? <laughs> walking across the what? The US? Next year? Big deal. Yeah, yeah, you know, whatever. And I was Do just... you have good footwear? Yes. Okay. Um my question was, do you have any advice for these big projects that take lots of planning? and what you do to make sure that they get off the ground and get completed. Also, Dustin says hi. Tell us what I said. Um, I, um, I've, I've done some long uh, bike rides, bicycle touring, I like to call it. Um, and it's an amazing way to travel. And so you're gonna have an incredible time. I would say, um, stay off of the interstates, because yeah. it's illegal. That's some advice I have for you. Um, and, and just be open to strangers. Oh, yeah. It's going to be kind of fun. Well, You're going to meet a ton of people. They're going to let you sleep in their houses. That's going to feel a little weird at first. You're going to be like, that's creepy that you're inviting me back to your home, sir. And then <laughs> you're going to actually find that they're really nice amazing people with relatively clean sheets all across America. Well, I've actually been in contact with um, the events team for Random Acts, and we're doing it together. Really? Yeah. Um, the reason why I'm actually doing it is because of your inspiration and a lot of the other cast members. Wow. So, so and so what we're doing is, I'm going to be stopping in cities. Uh, um, we're stopping in cities and doing like kindness events, like donation drives or park cleanups or going to nursing homes or children. Are you going to have like? Is it going to be like Forrest Gump? Like there's going to be all these people. People can join. Trailing behind you. People can join if they want a little bit, but they have to pay for all their own stuff. They have to pay for their own stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I'm. Trying it seems to... a little cheap. <laughs> okay, it's ten grand for me to do it. Ten grand. Yeah. Who charges you ten grand to walk across the country? It's five grand for gear and it's five grand to beat myself about because it takes like seven months to do. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I can't believe you can live off of um, five grand for seven months. Uh, <laughs> that's can very you, admirable. Considering um, the most I've ever made is twelve grand in a year. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. So, well, easy. That's very, very impressive. Um, well, I was going to say break a leg, but that doesn't seem appropriate, so... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So yesterday in your panel, you mentioned that you were telling a story about your kids, and you said you were in a bad mood because you're a parent. <laughs> On that note, do you have any parenting advice to maybe avoid that? Um, do you... are you a, a parent? Uh, almost. 
Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Um, when? When, uh, in January, I will be a parent. Wow. Mazel tov. Thanks. Um, <laughs> okay, yes, I have, I, I will dispense some actual advice. Um, so, <clears throat> when you're not a parent, you think, why, do, why are parents such douchebags, right? <laughs> you look at the way people are parenting and you're like, I am not going to be like that. I'm going to be the super cool parent who, like, just brings the kid along, folds them into my life, they're going to experience real adventure, and it actually, and, and I'm not going to, I used to tell myself, like, when I have kids, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do all that kid shit. We're not gonna go to the fucking playground. You know? <laughs> We're gonna just like sink our teeth into the, into life. We're gonna suck the marrow from things. We're gonna have great adventures. It does not work like that. <laughs> you will be at the playground, and you will re be reading shitty children's stories that you don't like, and you just have to suck it up. Um, I definitely had the notion that that somehow they were just gonna fold into the fabric of my life somehow, and it does, doesn't work like that. When we had West, we had West up here in Vancouver, and then when he was three months old, we decided to go on a road trip, that'll be awesome. <laughs> and by the time we got to San Francisco, <clears throat> he was so hoarse from crying that he couldn't cry anymore, which was kind of advantageous. But, <laughs> I had a real moment of epiphany when we were in San Francisco after he had been crying for three days straight in the car um, and throwing up on himself. Um, and I had him in like this baby yarn kind of thing, which you will soon know what that means. And, uh, and I had my hands over his ears because we were at some like San Francisco rave <laughs> like one o'clock in the morning and I'm like, <laughs> and all of a sudden I realized, okay, uh, I think we're going to have to modify our approach on this thing. This is not working at all. So, um, so yes, so you have to adapt to having children. You have to try, you, you have to not try to do everything that you were trying to do before. I think that there's this weird um, modern perception that we should be able to, you know, Everybody in the family should be able to go work 50 hours a week and still, you know, spend tons of time with the kid and it doesn't really work like that. So you have to change your life to adapt to them and make more space and time for them and stop doing as many other things. Uh, which is very depressing news, I know. But... You're saying I can't come to cons anymore? Oh, no, 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 you can come to cons. Yeah. yeah. Um, just bring the baby. I'll bring the baby here. Bring the baby, it'll be like Saturday night. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. You know what it is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. It's a girl. Congratulations. Thank you. She said it's a baby. It's a baby. <laughs> Good, how are you? I just remembered I'm not wearing shoes. You're not wearing shoes. Thank you for the update. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yep. Canada socks. You have all colorful socks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was wondering what kind of preparation you had to get into for that wonderful scene you and Rob had where Chuck eventually apologizes to Lucifer. What kind of preparation? Yeah, kind of what, like how you have to do that for a Lucifer. You mean, how did I deal with the, ha having to act in a scene with Rob? <laughs> yeah, because I wouldn't keep it together. I'd be like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe I'm in a scene with Rob. Jared, slap me. Slap me in the face. I can't believe it. That's how we get ready for scenes. We take turns hitting each other. Slap me. Slap me harder. Um,
Am I not supposed to talk about slapping each other? I feel like there's all of these inside jokes in there. All the porn you can handle. What happened to you people? You used to be, you used to be so nice. Oh, it's Kim and Rihanna. Rob has not been keeping them in check? No, he hasn't. Yeah, I noticed that he's doing the Eiffel Tower every chance he gets. Yeah, I noticed that. I could smell his musk on it. This really is what it's like, like right before a riot happens. Like, you can feel the energy in the crowd is building up. It's getting out of control. Pretty soon somebody's gonna start throwing something. Someone will pull a knife. Don't. What? Church day, yes. How do I prepare with the same time? Um. So. Thank you. Do I have carpal tunnel? Yeah. Why? I mean, I'm insinuating a lot of things, but mostly that you masturbate a lot. <laughs> By the way, I have to tell you... no idea how stressful it is up here. But one of the things that I am, am, am constantly conscious of is how I am holding the microphone. Because I know that there's going to be some schmuck out there posting a photo online. Well, now there is. So I, I, it took me until the end of my panel just now to figure to get to the bottom of why the what? <laughs> why, why the what? Um, the, the crowd is very unruly. Uh, <laughs> and, Did you get asked about your heirloom tomatoes? They asked about... They did? They broke the stuffing things down my throat. Awful. Suspension bridges. Um, yeah. I, was just, I was just asked if I masturbated a lot. <laughs> uh, and weirdly, weirdly, that felt like one of the more tame moments of the panel. Um, and it took me until just now to realize that it's because of you two that this is happening. They left, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. 
the, all the little like cute little like tiny little Castiels and Crowleys are gone. It's okay. At the beginning of the convention, I offered to uh, pay for their therapy. So. Oh, okay. It's great. all okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, we should have a table, like we'll have like the merch table and the random acts table and the file a lawsuit table yeah. and all of the creation. Yeah, necessary, yeah. yeah. Um, well, this has been <laughs> fucking terrible. <laughs> um, we have time for one last question. Acting in the visual media? Acting on camera. Acting on camera. <laughs> do you do it? Do you do voiceover stuff? I do. Yeah? Yeah. How do you like it? Uh, I mean, what I like about it is that like, you don't have to wear anything special. <laughs> you, can do it, you can do it naked. <laughs> no, I mean, no. but, uh, That's actually not a... Well, I mean, it is and it is. I mean... So when you do voiceover work, you're in a studio with a lot of other people. <laughs> right, right, that's right. And I, I generally, that's my, that's my, my gig. I yeah. That's what people expect at this point. On the Warner Brothers lot. Yeah. Like, where do you put Hey guys, your, how you doing, Frank? Good to see you. Where do you put your badge, like your security badge that they make you wear? Yeah, right? where do you put it, Ron? Right. Is it like a little waxing when no, you turn I, off? That's when my chest is shaved. Oh, it's, yeah. Let's see. It's not because I'm pre yeah. progressive. Um, Take it off. Sorry. So yeah, no, I, I uh, yeah, I guess that's what I like about it is that you don't have to, you know, or you don't have to memorize your lines. They're all right there. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. But uh, it's like this, right? Exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess there's nothing bad about it. It's just it can be tedious sometimes, I guess. But uh, more of that. This is good. This is good. This is great banter. <laughs> super well. Do you, you ever have to like? The, does Adam and Gary ever like put little things up, big prompts for you to say while you're on stage? Yeah. Like make make a dick joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. words on the screen here. It's yeah. Like, but it's not it's not Adam and Gary. It's Richard. <laughs> it's Richard Spate remote. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Uh, a dick joke is really gonna kill right now. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna go crazy and make a dick joke. So yeah, no, that's that's just my live feed and what to say. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to make a joke that, uh, even in this context, I felt was inappropriate, so I said to All right. No. Um, they are hungry, guys. They have been pushing me around. You've been pushing me around <laughs> ever since I got up here, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Good for you, ladies. Push them around.